A peptide is the topic for this video, and uh, I have some clinical vignettes at the end. So what is C-peptide? Well, it starts off with a molecule known as proinsulin, and proinsulin is secreted by the beta cells of the pancreas. And when proinsulin is uh, synthesized, it cleaves into two segments. The first is, of course, insulin, and the second is C-peptide. Now, insulin, of course, is what's responsible for bringing uh, glucose uh, back into the cells, into the cells. But measuring C-peptide levels is helpful in determining whether you have an endogenous or exogenous source of insulin. And I'll explain what that means. So let's put insulin here. Let's put C-peptide. And let's put endogenous. And exogenous. So endogenous is uh, something that's produced by the body itself. Exogenous is something that you uh, get from outside, either you know pills, injections, things like that. So what will the levels be here? Well, if your body is producing insulin endogenously, well, of course the insulin level will be high. And because when the body produces insulin, it gets it from proinsulin. C peptide level will be high. You have proinsulin, and then you have insulin and C peptide produced together. One molecule of this, one molecule of that. So endogenously, both will be high. But if you're exogenously produ uh, giving it as a preparation, as an injection, then that will be different and because injectable insulin preparations do not contain C-peptide. So this will be low or normal, and this will be high. So that's the key reason um, why people will measure this into uh, yeah, when you're investigating. Now some examples really quickly, endogenous would be like a tumor, like an insulinoma, and exogenous would be like some factitious disorder, factitious a disorder where someone is just injecting themselves with insulin uh, and then f trying to fake symptoms. So let's look at some clinical vignettes and see what this looks like. 33 year old woman uh, comes to the emergency department with a 12 hour history of dizziness and palpitations. She tells you that she is lapsing into severe hypoglycemia because of an untreated insulinoma. She tells you that. She is an intensive care nurse at a hospital in a neighboring town and she says that she goes to many different area hospitals. She tells you that she has been treated for hypoglycemia on three separate occasions at three different hospitals and is too frightened to undergo the surgery for the to remove the tumor. Her last food intake was 12 hours ago. Physical exam shows diaphoresis and pallor. Glucose level is 35. You give the patient glucose containing fluids then try to obtain her previous medical records. You are unable to reach any of the other doctors that have treated her in the past. Next step is, well, right off the bat, if you just took her word for it and said, well, she says that she has an insuloma, you'd probably do a CT, right? You'd want to investigate. But the problem is that this is a healthcare worker, and healthcare workers, not always, of course, but sometimes, they because they have a lot of availability to drugs and knowledge of uh, drugs, they can sometimes, small percentage of them, um, fake symptoms. And what's probably happening with this patient is she's probably injecting herself with insulin. So that is, of course, an exogenous uh, source of insulin. So her insulin levels will be very high, but her C-peptide level will most likely be low. So that's probably the next step uh, in this patient. Uh, next one. A patient reports of periodic bouts of lightheadedness and confusion. Blood tests show blood glucose is 45, so very low. 
Plasma insulin is found to be markedly elevated, but plasma C peptide is undetectable. Which of the following could explain these findings? Well, so this is obviously exogenous form of insulin um, administration. Her own body is not, uh, well, it doesn't say it's male or female. This patient's own body is not producing insulin because if that was the case, the C-peptide level would be very high. So this is exogenous. So it most likely, although this question doesn't give it too much detail, it's most likely a factitious. She's he or she is probably injecting themselves with insulin and faking um, these, uh, trying to f fake uh, symptoms. And that's why her blood sugar is so low, because insulin is dropping her blood sugar. And she does have real symptoms, but she's, uh, he or she is uh, doing this uh, purposely uh, to assume the sick role. So it's factitious hypoglycemia. And then finally, a 27-year-old nurse comes to the emergency department because of nervousness, dizziness, palpitations, excessive perspiration, perspiration for three hours. She has had similar episodes over the past six months. Symptoms improve following injection, ingestion of orange juice or soft drinks. She says that she has a great deal of stress. She has been drinking two alcoholic beverages daily for the past month. Before this time, she seldom drank alcohol. Examination shows no abnormalities. Serum glucose is 30. IV glucose is administered and the patient's symptoms improve. Which of the following is most likely most appropriate step in diagnosis? Well, obviously this question has to do with glucose, so we're most likely going to be probably looking at insulin levels. So pro-insulin kind of sounds like the correct answer, insulin antibodies perhaps, but in questions, always go for the most obvious, you know, always go for the most obvious, uh, most likely. And this, again, being a nurse and now, we don't know for a fact that she's faking anything or, or secretly giving herself exogenous insulin. We don't know any of that, but we can um, try to figure out if it's an exogenous um, insulin uh, administration case or if it's endogenous, meaning is she have some tumor uh, that's producing insulin. That can be done by comparing insulin levels and C-peptide levels.